Hey, good morning and good day, everyone. Uh, nice to see your smiling, bright faces again. Uh, my name is Otis Toussaint, and I'm here with the Office of the Surgeon General here in AHHQ, uh, Washington, D.C. What are we talking about today? What are we doing today? Well, we're going to have a conversation with several individuals from different commands. Uh, we've got one from uh, Recruiting Command uh, at my old stomping grounds with the Tiff Medical Recruiting Battalion. We've got Captain Holly Weaver. And we've also got uh, two distinguished guests today, Lieutenant Colonel Sam Preston and Chaplain Colonel Cooper. And I hope that you enjoyed today's discussion. And how would I like to start it off? I would like to start it off by adding on to my discussion panel. Uh, let's see, we will have uh, Captain Holly Weaver go ahead and introduce herself. Captain Weaver. Hey, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in for another live stream. I'm so happy to be here today with Otis, and, um, you know, we're just excited to um, kind of engage with everyone out there before the holidays really kick off and just, you know, show that we care and that and talk about, you know, how it's important to care for yourself and care for others. Awesome. Awesome. So, Captain Weaver, I really appreciate the uh, invitation to come out and work with you again, obviously. Uh, the next guest I'd like to have on and discuss with us is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sam Preston. Sir, go ahead and introduce yourself. Howdy team, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sam Preston here, uh, Chief of the Army's uh, Behavioral Health Division. And I, I just wanted to say to Mr. Toussaint and the team, uh, thanks for having me. This is such a uh, timely important topic, not only because of the season, uh, but also because of the the last year that we've had as we reflect upon the year and some of the challenges that we face um, as leaders and as an army and then as a as a country. Um, so uh, really appreciate the invite and thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for your quick intro there, sir. And uh, last but not least, we have our Chaplain Colonel Ron Cooper. Yeah, welcome, everyone. It's good to be with you today. I'm Chaplain Ron Cooper. A MedCom Command Chaplain, and it's great to be here. Uh, it's such a wonderful opportunity to reach out through Teams. You know, it's one of the, in live stream and various venues, it's one of the benefits that has come through uh, the coronavirus. I mean, we're reaching out in new ways and getting creative in how we can uh, communicate and be together. So uh, I'm really excited about this time together with such a wonderful uh, venue. Thanks for the invite. Uh, and uh, look forward to, to being together. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. Thank you everyone for their introductions. Uh, so how would I like to guide our discussion? This is more of a discussion-based uh, type of discussion that we're gonna have today uh, with uh, our distinguished guests. I hope that everyone takes the time to actually check out the uh, content and the message behind our actual discussion today. Yes, 2020 sucked, absolutely it did. But that does not mean that there is an opportunity for us to build on what 2020 was and what we can look forward to in 2021. And so we have a two uh, distinguished uh, individuals, plus myself and uh, Captain Holly Weaver. And so we're gonna have a lively discussion. I encourage you to, whatever channels you're looking at our discussion today, send in your messages, whether it be YouTube or Facebook, send in your messages, send in your comments, and we'll actually address your comments uh, right then and there. You know, People are looking for a good conversation, so this is that time and opportunity. Uh, well, before we actually start, I'd like to at least pull up two different banners that I'd like for everyone. If you have the opportunity, you're looking for that outreach, that place, that person, that time or thing to actually talk to your in regards to your issues, et cetera. Go ahead and check out these two resources that I'm gonna place on our screen. The first is militaryonesource.mil. Great website, I've used it multiple times. And, uh, some of our guests, I'm sure, uh, know about this website as well. And also, we've got uh, Captain Holly Weaver's uh, direct message. Yes, she's working with Recruiting Command. Yes, she has an opportunity to provide. Maybe you're interested in getting to uh, being a medical provider for this Army Medicine that we're working with. Well, her contact information is right here, and it's on the ticker on the bottom. If you're looking for uh, to get in contact with her, to send a message to, like, hey, I'm interested potentially in participating and being a, a professional in the Army Medicine uh, career field, that's the uh, site that you could go on. And that's their point of contact and our information on the bottom. So I'd like to now, I guess, get off of my uh, talking pedestal and add on everyone in our guest panel. So 
Here we go. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing today? Hey, Otis. <laughs> oh, kind of weird. There you go. I just want to say um, that this group collectively, we all had to practice our resiliency and um, had to be adaptive to get ready um, for this live stream. Um, for everyone that's watching, you know, we had a few technical issues, but we are like rocking and good to go now. So, um, you know, that's why you always have to do a little communication check and make sure everything is um, going well. Absolutely. It looks like we already have comments going in, coming in, Otis, if you yeah, want we to do check have, those we out. Do have, we do have some of these comments coming in, and I'd like to pepper them in during our discussions here and there. So let's go ahead and put up some of these comments already. We've got one coming from uh, First Sergeant Gardner. How you doing there, First Sergeant? How you doing? Miss you, man. Uh, he says, uh, can we get shout out the chaplains as well? Absolutely. We, heck, we've got right on the ones and twos, we've got Colonel Cooper in the house. And he is the man behind Army Medicine's uh, chaplain, of course. So he's there. And he's definitely going to offer some really good comments and advice uh, to anyone who's looking for comments and advice through our discussion. Uh, we've got uh, one from Mr. Clifford Lovett saying, good morning, Captain Weaver. And he said, good morning to me as well. Thank you very much. We've got Mr. Peter Beckman uh, saying 2020. Hey, 2020 was rough. Stay there with us, Peter. It was rough, but we're going to build, and 2021 is going to be an even better year. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I'd like to have uh, Captain Weaver, you go ahead and you know kind of guide our discussion as to how we're going to go about with today. So um, the whole kind of premise behind, um, you know, just wanting to reach out and, and do this live stream about leaders that care. Honestly, it came back from a personal experience that I had um, back in 2019. And, you know, everyone that I work with um, really closely and obviously my friends and family know. But for everyone out there, um, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and, and be real and, and raw um, with you guys. I um, actually gave stillbirth to my third child in September of 2019. And that was honestly the hardest thing that I ever personally went through um, and had a really hard time um, getting through that and just struggling a lot mentally. So I actually used Military One Source myself um, and used a lot of different resources. and. I had to focus on um, taking care of myself before I could get back to helping take care of others. So I'm just very passionate about um, doing the right thing as a leader and supporting others and taking care of yourself because I think it's just so important. Um, having gone through grief and um, kind of a personal tragedy, um, you know, it really, I had never felt um, that way before and had never been that depressed and and going through days where you just feel total darkness um, you know it's it's rough and um, this year there has been a lot of darkness um, for many different reasons so it just really called in my heart um, that we do this live stream we bring in the experts and you know we just get together and we just share um, stories and experiences and um, provide, you know, the tools that we can use to help move forward because um, it was through a lot of self-growth and reading and um, self-development that I was able to overcome um, and move past um, my loss. And, um, you know, I ended up getting pregnant again and I've since given birth and now have a beautiful, healthy baby boy and have um, three amazing children. So um, that's really all I want to share on that. Um, but, you know, I just um, just know um, this is, you know, from Holly to you that the worst thing is not the last thing. And there is a light out there. You just might not be able to see it. And I can say that from personal experience. So I'll bring it back to you, Otis, and to the team. Um, you know, it just really is a personal passion of mine. Um, just showing, you know, that I am, a, you know, a human person and um, Colonel Preston, um, Chaplain Cooper, they care about everyone out there. And, you know, we just want to show you and just talk to you guys and share those experiences and, and the tools that we can use to um, get through this year 
and get through all the hard things that we have to experience in our lives. Absolutely. Gentlemen, do you want to, you know, a, a word that kind of, I kind of keyed in there that she said was, um, you know, relearning and re-emerging and becoming a bigger, better, stronger version of who you were beforehand. Uh, would any one of you all like to develop a little bit on that? Oh, hold on, hold on. Colonel Cooper, I think you're mute. Go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and I'll give you the solo screen. Go yes, ahead, there we go, sir. Thank you. I'll jump in. So I I thank you, Holly, for sharing um, out of your experience and how it has reframed, reshaped, or um, emerged as, as an opportunity for you to um, embrace empathy in new ways. Uh, you know, when I think of the holiday season that we're in right now, uh, all the memories made, fun family times, the traditions, you know, they're an indelible part of who I am. Uh, they've shaped me, uh, my life view, my my uh, belief system, uh, and, and what the season means to me ha has been shaped through those years of experience. And as I flip through those chapters of my life, and I remember the generations uh, from years ago that were the matriarchs, patriarchs, who've helped bring the good cheer and ring in the new year. You know, many if, of them are no longer with us. And even so, the memories are there. And, and, I, and I engage that memory because, you know, they help ring in the new year. And as has already been stated, this, this is a pretty rough year. And it's even rougher for those of you who've experienced loss, uh, especially recent loss in the last few years. Uh, it emerges as something that's uh, very raw, very real, and likely to find yourselves thinking about those individuals and the pain is, is fresh and real. Uh, so, you know, we, we want to encourage you to take care of yourselves. And, you know, and, and additionally, many of us have made the decision to stay home, you know, with safety in mind. And in the military and in our very fluid world that we live in, we're, we're definitely um, away from family much of the time. So uh, these are challenging times. And yet, I think that there's a whole strength that emerges out of the experience and the memories that we had uh, in the relationships that we currently have. Uh, that steadies us. And it's just amazing to me on the other side of a very difficult, traumatic, uh, horrible season of life, uh, people can emerge and do emerge uh, with tremendous re resiliency and that ability to come back and to come back with greater perspective and strength. And that's not to dismiss the pain and loss, uh, but to come back stronger, as Holly said. So um, I think I'll I'll pause there. Awesome, sir. I really appreciate um, I really appreciate you you know just sharing the good word regarding that. Uh, Colonel Preston, would you like to add on with that? Sure. For, I think first I want to just thank uh, Captain Weaver for her testimonial. Um, uh, many of us um, that will uh, that will strum a, a heartstring. Um, certainly the loss of uh, life in general, an innocent life, that is something that has uh, touched us as, as a part of our existence. But what I was struck by the most in that testimonial is the, the idea of post-traumatic growth. And when you think of trauma, oftentimes, you know, when, when you wear, wear this uniform, we think of trauma as uh, in combat um, or, uh, you know, surviving under fire, but, you know, Life can, can be full of traumas and, and, and people um, respond to, to adversity, to stress in different ways. And depending on, on how you're doing or where you're at, um, you may need a little help in, in navigating those, those stresses or adversities, just like you may lean on your battle buddies as you're struggling with some of the experience that you may have. If you wear the uniform and deploy uh, uh, to a contingency operation. But, but the, the idea and just paralleling to what uh, Colonel Cooper had mentioned is we, it, a lot of it comes from our perspective and our willingness 
uh, to take our challenges as they come to us and either become the challenge and say, I, I, I am the recipient of this challenge and I, and I am now a part of the challenge or rising to the occasion and using uh, every resource that we have to learn from that um, or to grow from it. And even something is as horrendous as the, as the stillbirth of a child. Um, how much, you know, would one appreciate more of the children that they have, even though it is, it is definitely not what anyone wants. And the, the, the fostering of love and the recommitment to having children uh, in Captain Weaver's story, I was just struck by that. And, and the, the, the post-traumatic growth and an otherwise traumatizing situation that she displayed. Um, and, and I'd like to offer that we have, we have a piece of Captain Weaver in each of us. So as we face these challenges day in and day out, tap that inner Captain Weaver, that, that inner testimonial that we heard, uh, and use that. Uh, I think that's very important as we navigate these very challenging times. Thanks for the opportunity to, to talk on that. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, I guess a, a personal testimony of my own, you know, as a veteran myself, as uh, someone who is obviously a civilian now working in the military, that does not mean that I, I am now pulled away from the actual trauma that you that I may personally have gone through. And it doesn't mean that I can't be a good voice to those who may be looking for solutions uh, to their issues that they're personally going through as well. So I want to you know say, hey, Captain Weaver is one of the strongest people I know, and I want to give her her props and her kudos for all that you do. I know, I know you're kind of like, hey, whatever Otis, but it's what I feel personally. And it's something that I wanted to just give you your props for. So shout out to you personally. Uh, and so we've got uh, some comments coming in already. I'd like to go ahead and post some of the comments and maybe we could respond in some of those comments uh, that we post on the screen as well. Uh, the first comment comes from uh, Colonel Tweet. Uh, she says, thank you for being transparent, Captain Weaver. People need to hear real life experiences to know they're not alone. Absolutely. I agree with that, man. Uh, and this is the first comment that I see here from uh, Mr. Andrew Ingalls. I hope I... Uh, Ingalls. Uh, Ingalls. Andrew, Andrew Ingalls. Ingalls. Can I say something about Colonel Tweet's uh, comment ahead. really quick? Something that I've learned um, in recent recent times since, since uh, 2019 is that vulnerability is strength and sharing your experience and putting yourself out there even if it is something you know that you get emotional about it allows the opportunity for you to grow yourself and to grow with others and then when you yourself are transparent and vulnerable then it allows the opportunity for other people to feel comfortable to be um, transparent and vulnerable um you know i had reached out um, and was talking, um, you know, on a social media platform and, um, you know, just shared and said, you matter, you know, the world needs you. And I had a couple people reach out um, and then I learned things about them that I didn't know that were going on and I would have never known. Um, so it's, you know, taking the time to have that connection and then you will learn more about, you know, what's going on in your friends, your family, your colleagues' life. And then we can support each other because we all have hard things that we're going through, but we don't know unless we put ourselves out there and then we are able to receive, you know, what they um, are going to share with us. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Captain Weaver. Let's go ahead and jump in with um, um, Andrew Ingalls. The first comment. Andrew says, this, I personally believe that one of the reasons I left bedside nursing recently was a lack of emotional support in the civilian sector, the suppression of emotions people are expected to do. Wow. He, Andrew, Andrew put a whole lot into that comment right there. Um, how, about, how about you uh, three individuals? What's, what's some of the advice that you could give some of our civilian uh, folks who may be healthcare providers in their you know, because of the the necessities of their job, they're kind of suppressing their human side. What what are some of the advice that you could provide to, especially with that comment there from uh, Andrew Ingle? Well, I, I think if if I could chime in first on this one, um, Andrew a Andrew, first of all, thank you for what you've done as a as a bedside nurse. 
Um, medicine would not be able to function without our nurses. Um, I am a physician myself, and uh, I would say that um, if it wasn't for our nurses um, keeping the watch 24-7, 365, um, we could not save lives and be there. Um, and so I, I just wanted to first thank you for, for everything that you've done. And then also acknowledge that there is um, a growing body of research that supports what you're saying. Um, the, the term burnout has, has fallen out of favor a little bit, um, uh, but, but it, for the purpose of this, we'll talk about how as an individual just keeps giving pieces of themselves to help others. And part of it is the, the requirement of the profession of nursing, of medicine, um, which requires us to give of ourselves uh, to save lives. And the other piece, the other part of that is our personal commitment, our, our moral or ethical commitment or the fiber of who we are. Maybe it might be a belief system that says that we have to take care of others before ourselves. And, and so just like that, there are two parts to this. I'll talk to the professional part first, but also the personal part. So the professional part is we need to do a better job uh, of, of caring for one another from, from the administrative level and acknowledging the, the, the suffering and pain and the sacrifices that our medical personnel are going through during this period of time, some of which have their own children at home uh, because they're not able to go to school and those stresses that come with us. And so there's a, there's a lot of research going on specifically in the New York metropolitan areas. They were the first to be impacted uh, as well as uh, the United States Army is conducting assessments on how we can best support our medical providers um, through COVID. And, and then the other piece to that, the personal piece to that is, um, I, wanna, I wanna send the image of us on an airline and we have a decompression event. And what happens during a decompression event? Uh, the, the, the masks come down, right? And part of that is ensuring that if you are taking care of somebody, that you put on that oxygen mask first. And I know that this is a, a metaphor that's used over and over again, but I can only remind us even more so during these very stressful times, that if we aren't sleeping adequately, if we aren't taking care of our nutrition, and part of taking care of our nutrition is not overindulging in, in substances or alcohol, uh, and then also ensuring that we allow ourselves for rest as best we can and when we can. If we're not refilling our tank and putting on our oxygen masks, um, then, then we're not able to help other folks. And so as we clumsily try to develop ways to support our medical personnel in these very dynamic times, uh, I ask that we also concentrate on things that we can do uh, to take care of ourselves, to put that oxygen mask on first. And then I think later on what I'll do is I'll talk about some of the resources that there are available. But again, that, that you make a great point, Andrew, and thank you for your service. And thank you for all those medical personnel out there um, that are keeping watch and keeping us safe during COVID. Absolutely, sir. I think metaphorically, that was a good, great example. Like you can't really take care of other people that's on your line on that flight if you're not taking care of yourself. But I, I, I kind of like the metaphor that you use there. Um, uh, sir, uh, Colonel Cooper, would you like to jump in on this? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, you know, as, as I think about uh, what you shared, Andrew, uh, I, having worked in hospital ministry for the last 10 years in various capacities, you know, it dawned on me somewhere along the line that if you care, it's going to cost you. And, and I applaud your ability to recognize uh, the cost and uh, the ability to be authentic and transparent and attempt to share that. I mean, it is disheartening uh, that you didn't feel as though there was a, a place for that amongst uh, your colleagues or perhaps the administration. Uh, but the fact is um, it does cost and there is a price and it can lead, as Colonel Preston said, to the burnout. And so I, I just want to encourage you to, um, uh, to know that there are, there are many of us out there who do care, who do appreciate, who keep our healthcare frontline practitioners in prayer and in our thoughts, uh, because day in, day out, COVID or no COVID, uh, it, 
it, it's a very challenging uh, profession that the medical personnel are in. And I wanted to share, I've shared this in a couple other venues, but there were some, there was a study that took place not long ago by two Berkeley professors, Joshua Brown and Joel Wong. And it was a study on gratitude and the benefits that were received by those who consciously count their blessings. In other words, uh, they, they looked at several different areas uh, that can make a difference in their life. And the first thing that they came away with in this study was that gratitude impacts our attitude. And it's not that attitude impacts our gratitude, but it's the gratitude first that impacts the attitude. And somehow it unshackles us from those toxic, unhealthy places that we find ourselves in from time to time. Our gratitude dictates our attitude. Absolutely another excellent uh, metaphorical statement there uh, by Chan uh, Chaplain Cooper. We appreciate that comment there, sir. Um, I, I, it looks like Andrew does have some additional comments uh, in, in regard to the original comments. So let's go ahead and post them up and then we can just address them as a whole. And so he said uh, in the continuum, he said nurses are expected, here it is, nurses are expected to be strong and not let emotions affect us. Showing that is a sign of weakness. We have to get away from that as I a think world. It I think that's kind of, that resonates with um, uh, what was being said before. I, I think uh, absolutely that resonates with what was being said before. An additional comment here, it said, I work eight shifts every day and lost a patient, not due to my inability to take care of him, but that work it was stacked against us. And I understand. Um, Captain Weaver, do you want to possibly add on to uh, Colonel Cooper's original comments there? So I, <clears throat> excuse me, um, absolutely what Andrew is saying, um, you know, talking about the DAC is stacked against these ICU nurses, ICU um, doctors, everyone that's working, you know, in the critical care setting right now, the DAC is stacked, stacked against them. Um, you know, I actually just uh, got off the phone, um, like at midnight, I was talking to my friend um, on the phone. She is a provider in the ICU. Um, she's a civilian um, nurse practitioner. And she was telling me some stories about um, her experience with COVID and um, the patients and how as soon as a bed goes empty, it's filled again. They have hospitals that are calling to try and transfer patients. And you know, it's just, it's a continuous thing, um, you know, and so it's just a, um, and I have many other friends that are frontline healthcare providers right now that, you know, they're just not getting a break. They're not, um, and they just have to keep, um, keep going because there's no option. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, there's no relief. And so one of the things that, um, my friend shared with me, um, and I'm so thankful I was able to talk to her last night, um, she said that something that has helped her um, kind of provide some care um, as she goes through this is that they are sending sympathy cards to all of the families um, of patients who have passed away. Um, and it's almost like it's closure to the team because they fought like heck to try and save the patient. Um, but then it's also letting the family know because they've gotten to know the family over the phone and really, um, you know, communicating um, their care and their, um, you know, just getting to know them. So um, I think that that's something that, you know, sometimes when you have that gratitude and you do something nice for others, it also is impactful and um, truly is benefiting to ourselves because, um, it's kind of just that, I don't know, mental fulfillment per se, um, but really just kind of helps um, and this therapeutic. Um, I know that anytime I get a thank you card, a uh, thinking about you card, anything like that personally, you know, I just take a moment and just kind of think, you know, this card might have cost $5, but this person intentionally set, a set aside, you know, time out of their day was thinking about me and wrote me a card. Um, you know, I, I just think it's the, one of the nicest, you know, quick gestures that you can do that can really have an impact on someone's day. So Absolutely. I just wanted to share, um, you know, that's something that's 
an ICU um, provider is has taken up and that's what their team is doing out there and is helping them um, get through this because right now they don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. So this is something that they're doing that's helping them. Understood, understood. We've got, uh, let me add on Colonel uh, Tweet's uh, comment, uh, she said in, in follow-up in regards to post-traumatic growth. Uh, Colonel Tweet said, uh, that's a positive side of trauma that's not often highlighted. One can gain strength through tragedy. Uh, this is a great topic, especially during our time, current time. Um, <laughs> I absolutely agree with you there, ma'am. Um, you know, personal tragedy, <laughs> Life will always come and kind of uh, give you some hits via the dodgeball that is life. Dodgeball, the game. Uh, sometimes, you know, the year 2020 is kind of like dodgeball with razors, unfortunately. But it's it's still an opportunity for you to build on that traumatic situation. When I get down, I always think in a manner of, you know what, this is as low as it could get. This is an opportunity now for me to relish in the opportunity of developing and building on myself and taking care of those who matter, taking care of those who look out for me and look out for everyone else. And so this is something that I hope that everyone is kind of uh, uh, understanding and, and connecting with, hopefully. Um, we've got another comment here uh, from Captain Samuel Brown from the Kansas City Medical Recruiting Company. Shout out to you, Captain Brown. And Captain Brown says, I think Andrew's comments additionally highlight the importance of leaders and peers showing appreciation for our soldiers and coworkers. A thank you in some shape or form can go a long way with helping us press on. As rough as 2020 has been, it's nice to see the world's healthcare workers recognize the amazing work they put in each and every day. Um, <laughs> I see your head shaking, uh, Colonel Preston. Go ahead and uh, talk, talk to us about what you feel about that comment. Well, uh, peer support is um, is essential, and in it de it doesn't matter who I'm talking with if it, it's a, a medical school student or a, a psychiatric resident. Uh, I always ask the same thing: What is our number one resource uh, as a physician? And um, some will say, "Well, it's it's the it's a certain app, or it's a, it's a book, or that my number one reference is this." It's actually our peers and peer support is something that is, um, it's almost like a lost art form. Um, perhaps if you were in an area where HIV was uh, epidemic, um, you remember at, before we had any of the, um, the medications uh, to help those struggling with that virus, uh, what those communities that were inflicted with the virus did is they set up support groups, not of doctors, um, but of themselves. And they sat around and they talked about their struggle and acknowledged that they weren't alone and that they faced this horrendous mountain together. And um, as we look back on, on what we could have done um, early on in COVID, not just for those that survived COVID, but also for the healthcare workers supporting it, is is really setting up those peer support groups um, where we share our experiences and as well as our uh, strength and hope for the future and that we're not alone and that we're in this together. So so I offer to those that, that are listening in that if you are in a position to set up a, a peer support group and be that change in the world, um, that you as a human being leader, um, you absolutely have the ability and the right to do that. And so here, here, uh, to what uh, Sam Brown said, um, we must acknowledge and our peers are our best resource. Absolutely. Chaplain Cooper, go ahead and develop on that for us. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I fell off there a moment ago. So, you know, one of the things that I think has become so effective along this line are communities of practice. And, you know, there's many professional organizations that are encouraging professional um, gatherings uh, that Sam references there in the venue, you know, through Zoom or various uh, platforms can can be a phenomenal way uh, to bring collegial support to one another. So I, I would encourage if if there are none that you're aware of to create a community of practice 
of like-minded people who have like-minded interests and can be that mutual support. Uh, I, I'm a part of uh, two communities of practice and I find uh, great peer collegial, um, uh, you know, ed, ed, mutual support and education that emerges from that. So that that's one option. And, and I just want to follow up with uh, what Holly offered as well. And I think that ICU nurse is onto something, Holly, because uh, in that study, uh, they found that when participants wrote letters of gratitude to people who made a difference in their life, uh, they found that the participants uh, that used more positive words in the gratitude letters, uh, they didn't necessarily have better mental health uh, immediately, but it was when they used fewer negative words. So very interesting that letters of gratitude were an opportunity uh, to bring closure, of course, for that individual, but also to build uh, some gratitude within oneself that is a tremendous force for good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Holly, would you like to join in on this uh, discussion? Share with us what you think. Absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to share as well. So um, to go off on um, what Colonel Preston was talking about with the peer support, I cannot stress that enough. Um, I am, social media is an amazing thing. Um, too much, obviously not a good thing. You know, we don't want to be connected, so connected that we're always on our phones, which, you know, sometimes it's hard not to be with jobs and, you know, just with the 2020. But um, anyways, so there are so many different groups out there on social media, um, you know, that provide so much support. One group that I'm a member of that has provided me countless resources and, um, you know, just peer support when I've needed it. And I've found people to actually reach out and connect with that have gone through similar experiences is the Army Officers Women's Mentorship Group. And it is a network of over 11,000 um, Army officer women um, that are on Facebook that have connected and linked up together um, who share their stories, their experiences, their struggles, their triumphs. Um, and it has truly been a huge blessing in my life because, you know, I have been able to find mentors through there. I have, um, you know, found other women who have gone through similar experiences. You know, we share TTPs, you know, we share just so many different things. So it's amazing. Um, you know, and then uh, on the recruiting aspect, there are um, groups, um, you know, for the AMED recruiting, there's a group of almost a thousand members. And anytime, you know, I have a question or I find a lead um, in a different area, which happens all the time because of social media, I'm able to get on there and find who I need and, you know, get that support um, from my peers. So I will say, you know, just like through, especially now that we are in a more virtual environment, we're not able to get together as much um, that peer support through social media has been huge. Um, our office just did our holiday Christmas party um, on Teams. And, you know, um, what I've been hearing from just different family members, from friends, um, you know, just people out there, you know, it seems like in general, people are just not celebrating or they're not having their parties. Um, and I just, I personally think for our mental health and our well-being that that's just not the right answer because we still need that connection. We still need to be there for each other, even if we're sharing, you know, our stories on a computer screen. Um, so during our party, um, you know, we shared, we talked about um, what we were grateful for in 2020, what we're looking forward to in 2021. Um, we did an ugly sweater contest. Um, and everyone voted, we had games, we did um, a scavenger hunt, we did um, a trivia, and we played Never Have I Ever Holiday Edition. Um, and then, you know, we did fun awards. So we had all these different activities planned. We even did a secret Santa. Um, but, you know, everyone had a good time. There was laughs. Um, you know, we, we got to get together um, on um, the computer when it wasn't just about work. You know, because when we get on Microsoft Teams, it's we're doing a training, we're linking up about um, this new, um, you know, ops flash that came out or, or something, you know, it's about work. 
but we actually got to socialize and hang out together. Um, so just having that peer um, support, you know, but just kind of shooting the breeze and it really felt good. And honestly, it was a nice way to celebrate. So I would encourage um, everyone out there, you know, don't cancel your um, your gatherings and your get togethers. Just shift them if you have to. Um, and you can still there's I did research online and found the games and it was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Thank you for putting out some options that people could probably never thought of previously. And how can I normalize or not, even, not necessarily normalize, but how can I make someone's, um, I guess, new social media or new virtual reality a, a more humanizing one? Those were really good ideas and options that you put out there. But speaking about that, how can how what's some ideas that you gentlemen both have in regards to how do you normalize, how do you humanize now in this new virtual world that we're living in? Well, anyway, I, I, okay. I think, well, normalize. So, um, oh my gosh, like hearing the word, the, the phrase, the new normal, I initially, I think in March, we're like, okay, we have to accept the new normal. Now that we've experienced kind of <laughs> the new normal is changing just about every every minute. And you, you almost cringe when you hear that, you know, the new, the new normal. Um, and so I, I think I think the key is to be creative and to be flexible. And um, it, as all of these things are happening um, every day and it's changing to to be creative and and to understand it is it is an opportunity it is a challenge for us to rise to the occasion and the occasions are changing uh day to day sometimes minute to minute but really just as captain weaver said don't give up on the opportunity don't 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 become the challenge don't let it roll over you rise to it uh surpass it and um, I think that's what we we need to we need to flip the script and change our mindset um, so that we are rising to a challenge um, versus letting the challenge uh, take us uh, wherever it may. Absolutely, Colonel Cooper. I saw you laughed also with uh, the comments earlier. Go ahead and join in on this discussion, sir. Yes. Uh, so, you know, several different things came to me all at once, but. One of the one of the opportunities I think we have here uh, is I mean none of us like this I don't think and there might be a few out there but uh, <laughs> when I broke my ankle on a run and fractured it and I couldn't run anymore and they put me in the proverbial boot remember the you've seen the boot I have a lot of mm -hmm. empathy for the boot and when I see the boot I'm an empathic individual you know it's it's <laughs> horrible but it's also helpful because it helps mobility. But it for you know I'm a type A personality like many of you, and it it forced me to stop, you know. And I didn't want to stop. I was the fastest walker. I mean, when I went from point A to point B, you know, I I don't think anybody could keep up with me or, you know, that I didn't pass back and forth. Uh, but I had to stop completely, and that was painful. And I went through the why question. You know, if only I hadn't dropped uh, when people dropped out, if I hadn't gone forward in the formation, for those of you in the Army, understand that, fill in the spaces. You know, if if only this in the first sergeant, he said, hey, anybody want to pass out water? You know, I, I need some help. I had no idea he was talking to me. And uh, I had to go through the why. And the why question is a natural progression to well-being is what I've decided. and. And I actually said to myself out loud, walking across uh, that fob, uh, you know, beat yourself up as long as you need to, you know. And, and the why question is painful because there's no answer to the why that satisfies. You can get the answer and it just doesn't satisfy. But then I began to see the benefits of slowing down in ways that I could not have seen otherwise. And I literally began to hear and see things that I would normally take for granted and didn't see. And I began to let go of those negative thoughts and I began to embrace the world and see the world in a new perspective. And I think that might be an opportunity for 2020 going into 2021. As I was preparing a 
curriculum for this extended unit uh, that I'm going to do distance learning, I was it shocked me that the last time I did that a year ago was when we moved into COVID. And, and I think that perhaps, you know, the Latin word is renovare, to renew or to restore. And perhaps this is an opportunity for us to find deeper meaning and explore perhaps more fully the significance of this season of belief that we're entering into. And, and I encourage all of us, you know, to see with fresh eyes, to take fresh ears and to feel the season that we're in, be it the COVID season or the season of holiday celebration and, and smell the fragrance of the season. And perhaps, you know, with that resolute strength that Americans have and, and people just astound me at the strength that they have and the resiliency that they demonstrate and the ability to come back from very difficult situations. Uh, so, so perhaps I, I see this as a, as a bit of an opportunity. Mm. It's an opportunity for, I think uh, this is something that we've all kind of touched on. It's a new opportunity to really rebuild, renew, and resoundly re-emerge into something that's uh, better, bigger, and stronger in 2021. Um, can we talk? Can we talk a little bit about personal stories about when you were at your, you know, toughest, lowest points? Or maybe it be, maybe it's recently, maybe not. Uh, what did you do to find yourself? rebound and become the bigger, better, stronger person that you are today. And I know Captain Weaver, you spoke on yours uh, earlier. So what about you two gentlemen? You want, would you like to share maybe a, a quick touch point as far as a, a story that you may have? And you know, maybe someone could hear the story and learn from it. Because oftentimes, I'll tell you this, when I was in the military, folks tend to think that the higher grade that you go, you guys are not human and you guys don't go through rough times at all. So it's probably more refreshing to hear uh, two gentlemen who are field grades to now say, hey, these are things that I've personally gone through and this is how I bounce back from them. So either one of you all, if you'd like to share. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that. <clears throat> I have several stories, but not enough time for them all. Uh, <laughs> you know, back, I, Brad, you know, in the story that I just shared, um, I was a runner of 36 years and, you know, that, that was a tremendous loss for me. Uh, and another loss that was of pretty significant was um, actually when I made Colonel, because when I, when I made Colonel, I knew I was going to say no to a lot of things I loved. And I think perhaps the best job I've ever had was when I was with um, AMED Center in school and I was teaching clinical pastoral education and the director of the center of Brook Army Medical Center uh, just absolutely fulfilled and loved it. And of course, it is a tremendous privilege to, you know, to serve here in MedCom and it's strategic and strategic is not as gratifying. It is not as, uh, uh, fulfilling in many ways, uh, although it is very important. And so I think counting the cost is something that I've learned to do through the years. Uh, life has taught me um, that when you say yes, you say no. And when you move one direction, you often don't see the fork in the road. Uh, but those passions that we have uh, are part of the seasons of life. And so that you know, as you said, as we move up, you give up, um, Otis. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think I've been, when I came to MedCom and it was in the midst of COVID, I came from BAMC that was alive and full of people still, even in the COVID environment, you know, with the mission. And I came to MedCom and we were teleworking, you know, and so being a people person, uh, it, it was a little disheartening and uh, have found ways to engage and, and, and to meet people. But uh, counting the cost, and I think being where I am in the moment and giving myself permission to be where I am uh, is, is where I need to be. And then after a time, I'm, I mean, I bounced back pretty quick in, a, in my personality, 
but giving myself that time and not reframing and not uh, too quickly, because I, I think we can reshape and reframe a little too quick and miss the grief. So we have to grieve what we lost before we can embrace what is new. Absolutely. Carl Preston. Whoa, uh, that uh, giving ourselves time, Colonel Cooper. <laughs> oh, because as I, you know, I was reflecting on, you know, struggles that, that I have faced and, and like you, there, there have been many, but, but I, I want to, I want to harness what you said about giving yourself the time. Um, and I reflect on um, the, I am the, the consultant to the Surgeon General for psychiatry, um, but let me make it clear. Uh, I was not the best. Resident. Um, I had my struggles. Um, I, I was not a good test taker. Um, I tried to be a good person, um, but man, I loved my patients and I still do. And I had a patient, unfortunately, um, and I'm, you know, during a time period that was very, very turbulent um, for the United States Army, Walter Reed had a, a, a tremendous um, issue in, in reference to its WTU. Um, so people were very heightened. Uh, one of my patients uh, took their life. And um, not only were, was it a personal um, hit um, because I lost somebody that I cared for, I actually delivered their children um, as a family medicine physician. Um, I was not supported necessarily too greatly uh, by my chain of command. In fact, many of my friends and colleagues uh, distanced themselves from me. Um, uh, but I had one, one individual in particular that I remember, his name was Colonel Rob Manneker, a family physician from, uh, from, from my residency program, who um, along the way helped me understand uh, compassion. And uh, during that time period, I committed that I wouldn't be drinking uh, because that wouldn't be healthy at the time, uh, that I wouldn't do uh, unhealthy behaviors. I took control of the things that I could. So I joined a running group. Um, uh, I ensured that I wasn't drinking. I tried to eat well. I went to the gym five times a week. Um, and, then, and then I healed. Um, and and, and where, the, where, the, where the time part that Colonel Cooper... Um, What's so important about what he said is, you know, I had that pain of that loss of that patient. And what eased it is I was downrange and a colleague of mine, uh, unfortunately, witnessed uh, the, the death, suicidal death of his own patient in front of him. And um, I went to him and I shared my story and I made sure that he knew that he wasn't alone. And that though I can't ex necessarily understand the pain that he is feeling right now, I knew that he was going through it. And in that paying it forward, the idea of paying it forward, um, it, it relieved me. And now I, I call up providers when they struggle, um, when there's an outcome that was unexpected um, and I'm there for them. And I, and I pay forward what Colonel Manneker gave to me when others uh, not, didn't necessarily uh, have my back. And so allowing yourself the time to know that it's going to get better and also the opportunity to make it, make, make a difference in someone else's life when they go through the same thing. That's how I did it. And, and I did the things that I could to make, to make sure that it wasn't worse. So I could have, I could have hit the bottle. I could have um, engaged in unhealthy behaviors. I could have done all of these things. But where it counted, I decided, you know, I, I have control of these things. I'm going to make it better. And when I have the next opportunity, I'm going to make sure that others don't have the same experiences that I do. So, uh, Colonel Cooper, that was, uh, that was awesome what you said about allowing yourself the time to reflect. Wow. Sir, um, ooh. You, you know when you get goosebumps when you hear a story or a situation or a testimony as you just did? Uh, your testimony, I'm sure, resonated with a lot of folks. Um, you know, oftentimes in the military, we, we're, I hear the thoughts and I hear the, the, the comments of, hey, if you go ABH or hey, if you go to counseling, your career is over. I don't necessarily think that's the truth at all. Absolutely not. And I think you can no. be a, a test to that situation where you had your uh, challenges that you met 
you conquered them. And now you're that person that's providing care to others who may be going through those issues as well. So I want to just give you a salute and thank you for sharing that story. Absolutely. Thank um, you so much, sir. Absolutely. Holly, would you like to share? I think uh, the Sergeant Major of the Army recently shared some tweets that I think could resonate with a lot of folks who may be chiming in on our discussion. So shameless plug, if you're not following the Sergeant Major of the Army on Twitter, you need to be because this is, um, you know, I get the um, most unfiltered, best information from the top leaders from Twitter. So um, that's the shameless plug. But I, as I was preparing for this live stream and engaging, um, you know, with our subject matter experts, you know, I went into, um, you know, social media, talking to friends and really just wanted to pull out a few pearls of wisdom from the Sergeant Major of the Army. And I'm going to read a couple of tweets that really hit home. And this is the top, um, you know, he he's all the way at the top. And this is, these are his words and, um, you know, his beliefs. And I think if we just take a minute to reflect on what he's telling us, you know, we're going to be in a whole lot um, a better place. So his first tweet is, we don't judge soldiers for going to the gym to get stronger, a financial counselor to start an investment account, account a church to become more spiritual, a mechanic to tune up their car, enrolling in college, etc. And we shouldn't judge them for seeking behavioral health either. So that was his first tweet. And I just really feel like that hits home really hard because there has been a stigma for a long time in the military, out of the military, um, about behavioral health and taking care of your mental well-being. And, um, you know, our the leaders at the top are saying, you know, we shouldn't judge. So um, the next um, the next tweet that I want to share is um, he says, as your sergeant major of the army, nothing would make me happier than going a full week without one of our soldiers taking their own life. But we cannot do it without each other. Take five minutes today and ask someone in your squad how they're doing and don't accept I'm good, I'm fine, dot, dot, dot. So break through those surface level conversations and ask people how they're really doing. Ask open-ended questions and truly get to know, you know, um, your soldiers, your teammate, um, your friends, family, et cetera. Absolutely, absolutely. I think in, in closing, we actually got a chance to kind of get to know one another. Um, and I really appreciate everyone taking their time to, to share their personal stories, share their testimonies, give those words of advice and inspiration to those who may be checking out our discussion now or maybe later on in later recordings. Um, everyone, I think, absolutely hit the point as far as what they were trying to provide, that good, that good wholesome advice that folks are looking for. And, you know, I really appreciate everyone taking the time today to come and talk with, uh, talk with me. And so in closing, I want, I want to have everyone, you know, share what you've got going on. And, you know, maybe folks could check you out online or check you out wherever they're, you're at. Who would like to go first? Well, I can, I can just start off. So this, yeah, our military one source. So for those that are uh, veterans or uh, currently on, on active status in your dependents, um, this is a great resource for you. Um, you can get uh, non-medical counseling. Um, you can also get general counseling and advice um, and just ha talk to a, a, a sound party um, when, when things are difficult. They're available 24-7, 365. Um, so, so please use that. And if you're a civilian within the military, you have the employee assistance program. Wonderful program, um, not not highly utilized, but there there are opportunities at every camp, post, and station uh, for you to look at your garrison's employee assistant program. So if you're struggling and may not may not meet the uh, entry criteria for military one source, you can go to your uh, employment assistance program. And again, I just wanted to thank everybody um, for their commitment to the American people, to the U.S. Army. And I, I wish you the best uh, holiday season in a very optimistic 2021. Absolutely. Colonel Cooper. Yeah, I want to encourage uh, everyone to embrace their spirituality. I mean, we have hard research that shows that in the science of spirituality. 
think there's a hot mic out there. Don't worry, I got, I got it. Uh, so these in, in this research, they found that those who have a philosophy of life or a spiritual uh, spirituality or a belief system in which they follow uh, that, that that it builds sixty five percent greater um, re resistance, if you will, against uh, suicidal ideation or self harm. And if they practice that with someone else, eighty five percent. And, and we know from the MRIs, the impact that spirituality has positively on the brain. And so I encourage everyone in this season, uh, as, as we move into the holidays, uh, to move into your spiritual life and to embrace the spirituality, uh, perhaps that your grandmothers have shared with you or you've learned along the way, uh, because it certainly does build us up. It makes us stronger. And there is nothing like having the obvious transcendence in our life. Uh, to bring us hope. Absolutely. And Captain Weaver. The last thing that I want to leave everyone with is one final tweet from the Sergeant Major of the, Ar the Army. And it says, vulnerability and connection, both are simple and neither are easy. So just let that sink in. And um, I think that we are stronger together than we are apart. Um, and my resources and um, information is on the ticker, um, whether you're interested in Army Medicine. Um, you know, if you want to do a live stream with me, if you're within Army Medicine, um, we can set that up. If you're interested in becoming um, on the best team on earth to serve in Army Medicine, um, hit me up. Or if you just need to talk to a battle buddy um, or just vent, I'm there. Um, for you, or I can connect you to someone that can help you. I've personally used Military One Source. Um, I've talked to chaplains. I've gone to my um, church, um, you know, that I attend because um, I'm out here in Kansas City. There are resources. I care um, and we care. And we just wish you all um, the best um, holiday season and to a better. 2021. So thank you all Absolutely. for your time and your attention and your participation. It has truly been an honor. Absolutely. And I'll go ahead and close. Team, if you all could hang out in the broadcast room, we will talk a little bit more. Okay. Thank you again. And in closing, I want to say that was an absolutely wonderful discussion with uh, my three guests. Those uh, individuals were uh, subject matter experts in the medical field. Uh, would it be uh, psychiatry or religion or even Captain Hollywood uh, nursing? These individuals are here to help you, whether you're looking for military civilian, military help or civilian help. You can check us all out on uh, militaryonesource.com. And you could also check out uh, Captain uh, Holly Weaver's information on the bottom. As a person who has utilized mental health care uh, when in the military, I enjoyed um, the absolute raw and absolutely uncut assistance that I needed. It helped me to build me to be a better person that I am today. And so I support and I celebrate it as much as I often possibly can. And so in closing, I wanna to say to you all, it's a holiday season, it's a wonderful season. It's a season of living, loving, and taking care of one another. So in closing, I wanna say, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and take care of others. Army medicine is Army Strong. Bye now.